Hello FG fam and welcome to another episode of the Detroit Tigers franchise here on MLB The Show 20. Today we have a big divisional matchup starting off this episode against the Minnesota Twins. Make sure you drop a like on this video, subscribe if you're new to the channel for the love of franchise content, that is all we do here. We can build a winner together. Big matchup, it's on MLB Network here at Target Field as the Minnesota Twins take the field with Steven Matz pitching for them a 288 era and 118 whip he has been very good so far this season opposing him for us is carlos martinez a 391 era with a 152 whip Matt's in the top of the fourth gets justin turner to strike out to get through his fourth inning and then carlos martinez gets josh donaldson to swing through a pitch. So we move into the fifth inning with a runner on. It is Jake Rogers, and he takes this thing deep to left field. It is gone. A two-run shot is Rogers' third homer of the year off of Steven Matz, and we strike first. Now runners in scoring position here for Minnesota, but we do get out of the inning. Very nice pitching for Carlos Martinez today in this game. Trevor May comes in for the Twins. A 232 ERA for him. In the top of the sixth inning, he gets Justin Turner to swing through the pitch, and that will end that half inning. David Robertson coming in for relief for us. He will be pitching in his 19th game here. 257 ERA. He has had some success, but look at this. With a runner on second, giving up the base hit into center field, and that will score the Twins' first run of the game. They cut the lead in half. But with two outs, he gets the cutter away on Mitch Garver, and that brings us into the ninth inning with a lead, and you know what that means. Corey Ebel, Knebel, Knebel, I don't know. Everybody in the comments says something different. 293 ERA. And he is going to get the fly ball to left field for the second out of the bottom of the ninth. And now getting a fly ball into right field and scooting under it is Mancini to give us the win. Happy to see it. The Detroit Tigers over the Minnesota Twins. You always love to see us beating the Twins. Doesn't matter by how much. Martinez gets player of the game with his six innings pitch. Only two strikeouts, but he only allowed four hits today. So that'll bring his ERA down to 349. Robertson with the hold and the save for Knebel. And I'm going to keep saying it that way because it's cooler. Steven Matz with two earned runs in five and a third. And we get a win there. We also win the rubber game against the Twins to take that series two games to one. Now going up against the Tampa Bay Rays. We win that first game of the set and the second one. So going for the sweep against the Rays. We win 6-3 and 5-2 in the first two matchups. So here we go. They're 28 and 20. We are 22 and 27. This is going to be a very interesting matchup here at Comerica Park. We will see if we can take down one of the better teams in the wildcard race in the American League. Casey Mai is a 7-11 ERA for him. This has been very disappointing. He has been so cold over the last couple of months. Brendan McKay, 3-3 three three record for him with a 515 ERA and a 156 whip. So battle of struggling young pitchers here. Jake Rogers gets a hold of this one, but this one's going to fall shy of being a homer, unlike last game. Now Tucker Barnhart up against Casey Mize, and he is going to bloop one into right. Can't handle it out there in right. And that is going to allow the first run of the game. Now with the bases loaded on Casey Mize. And this one's going to get a hit into left field. And that will score two Tampa Bay runs. They're up 3-0. As we move along in this game, we have got to find some way to come back. But first, Casey Mize got to stop giving up runs. This one is hit deep out to right center field. And it is going to go over the wall for a solo home run for Tucker. Now this one's hit deep out to right field as well, and with a man on, that's a two-run jack for Lowe, his sixth of the year, and the Tampa Bay Rays already with a 6-0 lead. We're going to bring in Matthew Boyd. 
456 ERA. He has gotten a little bit better out of the pen. Facing Adam Eaton here. This one a little dribbler over to first base. That will get taken care of to get us out of this nightmare sixth inning. So now bottom of the six. Crone comes up, and he is going to provide the first run of the game for the Detroit Tigers with his solo shot of 416 feet. That's his sixth home run of the year. And the Tigers trying to get back into this one. Austin Meadows is going to hit one into the right center field gap, and that one is going to put runners. That's going to be a triple. Unbelievable. And now 7-1 to one in favor of the Rays. Here's Nate Lowe, and he continues to drive in runs. So Lowe with his two-run shot, and then that RBI right there. Josh Fuentes at the plate. He's going to hit one and bloop it into center. And mishandled by McGowan. He could not get there in time. That is going to allow another run to score. It is 9-1 Rays. Can we please get out of this nightmare in the seventh inning? Jake Rogers comes up. He slams one out to left field. That one's going to go all the way to the corner, bouncing off the wall. Well played out there in left field. But it is an RBI double for Jake Rogers. That'll bring in Peter Fairbanks to relieve for the Rays. A 3.75 ERA for him. He struggled against right-handed batters as far as giving up hits is concerned. But here, this is shed long, and this one's going out to center field, and it is off the wall. So a lefty striking against Fairbanks here, which is rare. And that is going to be a triple, an RBI triple. Now Richard McGowan up here in the bottom of the seventh. This one's heading out of the ballpark, but caught at the warning track. Just not far enough. Phil Maton coming into the game, 5.17 ERA. He has struggled against both righty and lefties as far as giving up hits is concerned. With two outs here, he gets the sinker away to get the strikeout and end any threat the Rays had there in the top of the eighth. Now in the bottom of the eighth, Trey Mancini out to the right center field gap. That is going to go all the way to the wall and careen off of it. And we are going to get a run here. Mancini not going to get the triple. He will stay at second with a double, but it is 9-4. We're starting to climb back a little bit, but do we have enough time? Nelson Barreto embarrassed on the away fastball from Fairbanks. Now Austin Meadows down the right field line. It is fair, which I don't think Mancini expected out there in right field. But that is a fair ball and it will go for a triple, a leadoff triple in the top of the ninth and that's going to start some trouble because Nate Lowe's had a very good game and this one is caught in center but the tag up will give the Rays their 10th run of the game. Now Joey Wendell comes up, and he finds some way to slap this through the third base shortstop hole. That brings in the 11th run of the game for the Rays. And now top of the ninth still, and we just cannot get off of the field. There's another one. That is 12 to 12-4, another RBI single for this Rays squad. Adam Eaton up now, and Adam Eaton is going to hit one into left field. This one's going to get caught, but again, another tag-up situation, and it's 13-4. to 4. This is embarrassing. Hunter Wood coming into the game. He's, like, been our best pitcher, starter, or reliever all year, a 196 ERA, and that's going to be thrown on to first to end this Absolute horrific ninth inning. So now Nick Anderson coming in. 5.68 ERA for him, but a 3-0 record. So, again, proving that ERA and record have no correlation whatsoever. There's a throw on to first to be the first out of the bottom of the ninth. We do have a runner on second, however. Shed Long absolutely cracks the bat here, and that is gone to right center field. A two-run shot for Shed Long, his third of the year, 447 feet. And it is now 13-6, to six, and that is how it ends. A football score here, Lions against Buccaneers, I guess. No, it's Tigers against Rays, but it was just a very high-scoring affair, and we just could not stop the Rays from bombing the ball all over the field today. Look at their top four players just absolutely crushing the baseball. They were on fire. We 
really were not. McKay goes six and two thirds, gives up three runs. And Mize goes five innings, gives up six runs, three strikeouts. So not a great game. We could not get the sweep. And the losing continues going into the Kansas City series. But we do get a 7-1 win in the second game and a 7-6 win in the third game of the Royal series. So very nice. We get an 8-5 win to take the series three games to one. Then against the Orioles, a little embarrassment there. We lose 10-3. We win 4-0 and then 4-1 to take that series two out of three. And then we lose the first game of this set here against the Royals. And now both teams with the exact same record at 27 and 31. Both teams tied for third place in the AL Central here at Kauffman Stadium. It'll be Chris Bubik, a four and five record with a 440 ERA and a 162 whip. He will oppose our Daniel Norris, a 675 ERA with a 174 whip on his four and three record. There's CJ Crone, he will go down, struck out by Bubik in the top of the fourth. You can see a lot of our starters are making it very strong through three innings, but that is where trouble lies. As in the fourth here, Daniel Norris will bring up the first run of the game. It belongs to the Royals. And then look at this, Ryan McBroom in the bottom of the fifth is going to rope a solo shot over the left field wall. 395 feet, his eighth homer of the season. In the bottom of the fifth still, this is a gapper into right center field. And again, Ms. McGowan just misplaying a lot of these balls in this episode out in center field. He cannot just pick them up. I don't know what it is with him. And this one is also gapped out there to left center field this time. That brings in another Kansas City run. It's 4-0, and the bottom of the fifth is not looking good for Daniel Norris. So Emmanuel Classe will come into the game now. He has a 482 ERA on this season. He's been very good against lefties. Righties have gotten him, but here's a lefty taking him deep to right center field. That'll go all the way off the wall and be the fifth run of the game for the Kansas City Royals. It's 5-0. Now here you got Jorge Soler down the left field line, and that is another one. 6-0 going for the double. He will be very safe at second. So now Phil Maton coming into the game. 627 ERA for him. He's been horrible against most batters this year. And that is going to be another run on a very dinky hit. 7-0. Here comes McBroom. And he is sweeping all the runners off the bags with a bomb to center field. 418 feet, a three-run jack. His second homer of the game and ninth of the season. Ryan McBroom making it near impossible for these Detroit Tigers to hang in this game. It's 10-0. We have another football score, except it's not a good one at all. So the Royals absolutely kicking our rear ends. Here's Trey Mancini. He is able to bring in a run with an RBI single to center. Hey, it's not a shutout at least. Here comes Sean Poppin. He has a 513 ERA this season, been pretty good against left-handed batting and unfortunately he's facing a righty here but they do get the out at second and Nelson Barreto just has not been very clutch in this episode here's Phil Maton still pitching in the bottom of the seven he has two outs but another big hit that one out to left center field and again miss playing out in the outfield just can't get the ball in quick enough gotta pick up these balls and throw them in and this one is blooped into right field they're going to go home with it, and the throw's not in time. So another run, it's 12-1. to 1. Now Chase Bouchore, he's going to get a RBI single to center as we try to throw home, but it's nowhere near in time yet again. 13-1 to 1 is your score. Justin Turner in the top of the ninth. Looking to bloop one into center field. That one is going to get caught. The tag up going over to third. We'll put a runner in scoring position 90 feet away for us, but two outs in the ninth. And C.J. Crone will strike out. Sean Poppin has gotten the Royals through this game. Easy win for them at 13-1. to Ryan McGroom, no doubt, player of the game with two homers and a double in this one. Kendall Brown was our best player today. Three for four with two doubles but unfortunately nobody wanted to help him out 
and that sucks. Norris goes four innings, five earned runs. Classe goes a third of an inning, gives up three runs. And Phil Maton goes two and a third and gives up three runs as well. So just not good. Not good at all. Bubik gets the dub there, and we are in danger of getting swept by the Kansas City Royals. And hopefully we do not. We do. So we lose 4-2 to two in the Casey Mize matchup, and now going up against the Red Sox. It will be Chris Sale and Carlos Martinez opposing each other. Martinez has been our best starting pitcher. Chris Sale, one of the best starting pitchers in baseball right now. It's 7-2 and two with a 267 ERA. Let me know how you think that's going to go. What kind of trade moves would you guys look to make? That I'm going to ask you that in this episode because I like to record ahead. So I want to see what you guys think we should do. Anybody who has made it to this point of the video, you guys are the MVPs. Love you guys, fam. I will see you all next time. Make sure you drop a like on this video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And click right here to see more videos. Take care, everybody. I feel you some help.